Welcome to episode six of Advanced Retro Adaptics, which is a conversation that I recorded with Arti, a Belarusian guy that I lived and worked with for five weeks on an off grid fab lab in the south of Portugal. So, as I mentioned in episode five, I'm slow traveling the world, volunteering at various ecologically focused projects in exchange for accommodations and food. I just finished over a month at a place in Portugal where, among other projects, I built a solar thermal panel using a CNC machine and salvage materials. I wrote a few posts about it on my blog, which you can find by going to tylerjdisney.com and looking for posts around April 2022. It was a really great experience, not least of which because I got to meet and spend time with amazing people like Artie. Artie's from Belarus, he grew up only about 250 kilometers from Chernobyl, and he's a bit of a political dissident. We talk about why he can't go back home, about his time in the army as a bazooka man, we talk about ADHD and why us neurotypicals maybe have ADHD folks to thank for a lot of the good stuff that exists in the world, and we talked about a lot of other things. I wasn't sure if this conversation was totally on topic for advanced retroadaptics, to be honest, but here's why I'm including it. Number one, being able to spend time with interesting people like RT is one of the reasons I'm traveling, and it's one of the reasons why I hustled to make this lifestyle work for me. So this is a sort of a show and tell of the kinds of experiences that I can have when I drop the normal expectations of what to do with my life. And I started pursuing autonomy and getting off of the beaten path. Two, I got a lot out of listening to Archie's stories about his experiences with Soviet-style systems and comparing and contrasting that to my own, which we talk a little about. And, you know, being skeptical about the systems we find ourselves in and then doing something about it is central to advanced retroadaptics, and that's a lot of what Archie's stories revolve around. And three, I just think Archie's story should be out there, so I'm happy to be able to host this. I recorded this conversation about three weeks ago. I'm now in Morocco. I'm about to head into the desert to help a family restore their mud brick home and work their palm orchard. I'm likely to be off-grid for a few weeks. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy half as much as I did this conversation between an American dirtbag and a Belarusian bazooka man. But it's just a conversation between a Belarusian and a, a American guy. If some people from uh, US is gonna listen to this, I just wanna make some clear about who is the Belarusian people. Yeah, the Belarusian people. So it's like um, the ex-Soviet Union. Yeah, includes a lot of countries in itself. But the most uh, like uh, main countries of the Soviet Union it was uh, Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and others. So the Belarusian people, it's like uh, we're between the, the culture was spreading, yeah, like from Russia to Poland, and we're just like uh, a middle of like between the Polish people and Russian people. So our own language is like uh, similar to Polish, but also Russian people can understand a bit of it, mm-hmm. and Belar and Polish people also can understand. So we're we're like on a, on a middle of it. Can can Polish people understand Russian people? Um, I think not so good. You know? <laughs> okay. Yeah, but we have uh, a lot of words in common with the Polish people. Yeah, with with Poland, we have a lot of uh, words in common, and uh, also we have a lot of words with Russia and Ukraine. So we're like a, in a it's like a circle, and we're between them. Mm. Yeah. So, but. Um, after some uh, time when the Soviet Union just ruined, yeah, some countries like Ukraine, Belarus, uh, Russia, Kazakhstan decided to stay close to each other, but be independent to each other. Like, I don't know, but in our case, we don't have uh, like oil or something, which is like a little piece of uh, land, which uh, doesn't have something to to be like uh, important for other countries yeah and that's why we are so dependent to russia mm. yeah like too much yeah, the gas and 
everything like like this and also they all every time they're supported to us like a money or something so that's why we're too close to russia and some a lot of people think that we're a part of russia because we all speak russian like everyone uh, from the from i was born i was just starting to speak russian yeah. and, and uh, we had uh, i had a classes in school uh, with the belarusian language but it's like almost like a death language. Mm. Uh, not too much people speak like a one or two percent of pe- a percent of people only can speak fluent in Belarusian. Oh wow! Yeah, so it's like a almost death language, and it happens just also uh, again like because of we are dependent on Russia and we have to be close to Russia. Sure. How similar is uh, Bel- Belarusian language to Russian? Um, like a f- uh, maybe 60 60 percent of words is um sounds more like russian language but the pronunciation of them is a bit more rude <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like close to ukraine or close to polish so it's like a you can notice the like language is just spreading to uh, uh, to the con- uh, cultures you know yeah yeah so uh, I think I will. I, I did some clear about who is the Russian people. So we're not Russian, we're not Russia, but we are so dependent on Russia because we don't have any resource to sell or to be uh, like live alone, like to to be independent yeah. fully. Yeah, and so we're not Russian, but we all speak Russian. But we're not part of Russia, but we have like no boards, you know, I can just go to Russia without having a passport with me. Oh, okay. So it's like it's so close. to Yeah, them. it's almost like like an EU, you can go from Germany yeah. to France. It's fine. Yeah, Same. yeah, it's almost like, yeah, yeah. like a stage, like, yeah. Among people in Belarus, do they think about the fact that they're so dependent on Russia for resources? Uh, and do they think that's bad? Do they, do they think about it? Some part of people wants to be part of Russia, mm. but maybe they wanted to be part of Russia before the war, ah, right? Yeah. They wanted to be some, uh, um, especially people, the cities which is close to Russia, you know, like living with a uh, nearby board of Russia. They really just maybe in the past before the war, they wanted to be a part of Russia because uh, they just do some... Uh, uh, shopping in Russia because it's so close sure. to them, yeah. And also Russian people came uh, coming to us and make some shopping. So, uh, part the some part of people they like uh, okay we can be a part of Russia because mm. we're almost like we just have uh, different flags and, uh, <laughs> and different laws a yeah. bit and different presidents. But um, also the situation about presidents. Yeah, we have our own president, but there is a, in Russia there are other <laughs> president. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, yeah. But our president again is he is so dependent to mm. a Russian president because mm. uh, he it's like a, we are all all the time we are making a fun of him because. Uh, when uh, he need more money for something, he always come to Russian president and always asking for uh, giving some money <laughs> and just like they're just a close friend, but the Russian president like a big brother. Yeah. And he was okay. I will give you some money. <laughs> yeah. So. But what your question was about the do people want? Yeah, yeah, like, they, do, 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 think? do people think, or do a lot of people think that it's a problem that mm. Belarus is so dependent on Russia? Yeah, it's a, it's a big problem because it's like uh, we've tried to destroy the system of uh, dict- dict- dictator. Yeah? yeah, it was in 2020. We've tried, but then we just realized that we so, uh, were so dependent to Russia. And uh, Russia always will support the dictator, the, which is a president of us. So it's a bad news for us that we are so independent to Russia. Yeah. And so that the, you're, you're talking about the 2020 election. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was a 2020 election. Yeah. And it was the first time. Uh, thanks for Internet, because the Internet like uh, spreading all information and people. Uh, it If it was before, like uh, 
2015, yeah, also was this ele- elections. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but at that moment, I don't know what happened, but a lot of people was just like sleeping, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, we already had the election, so our president is already like 27 years as a president. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I was born and the, this president already was a president. Wow. Yeah. So it, it, we just get used to this, you know. Mm-hmm. That's why the previous elections was like, uh, okay, we already, everyone is already know who is going to be the president. Sure. So it's, it's just getting, uh, started to get in like uh, obvious. Yeah. Yeah. But this uh, in 2020, something happened. I think it's uh, because of internet mm. and a lot a new generation like me we just want to we we can see from the movie from the internet how other people live how other countries live and then we just started to realize the the problem is the system which is held uh, by a dictator and so if you want to live like other countries live like a uh, democration yeah mm-hmm. we have to break the system mm. And that's why we we've tried to break in 2020, and then we realized that we so were so dependent to Russia. Mm. Yeah, and uh, if we wanna become uh, a freedom, yeah, free people, uh, the gl- the main boss has to die. <laughs> yeah, like it's like a big system which works uh, in dependent on other system. Yeah, did uh, so you did something in 2020. About yeah. The election, right? Um yeah, it was election, but I left country because I was uh, I planned already for traveling, yeah. And uh, I left the country, but I, I knew that I can uh, make a vote, yeah. Oh yeah. In Poland because there's a yeah, embassy of yeah. Belarus. Yeah, in Poland it is and okay, I can yeah. make a vo- my uh, vote there. Got so it. I was just planning that okay uh, I left the country but I uh, vo- I'm going I was going to vote in Poland yeah mm. but um, something happened that people of uh, dictator was in the embassy and they just uh, made some things they just starting to uh, getting votes so slowly To, uh, yeah, it's, it's for 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 a reason, you know. They yeah. they didn't want to get the more results of it. They just started to make it uh, slow mm. to to not uh, get a lot of votes. Right. So and I I couldn't do this because the line was so big and so long, and people were standing there and just trying to make uh, their own votes. And it was it also was obvious because of the system. The all the whole system works like uh, together, you know. Yeah. And it's so difficult to break it. And then we also started to more realize that we're dependent on something more. It's it's not so easy when the system was building. Uh, the system has been building the a lot of years, like you know, uh, and it's just to break it for one or two days. It's impossible. Because the system is just deeply in sure. his, or like Rufus, or something like this. Yeah. yeah, you can't change it. Yeah, overnight. Yeah, yeah. Was it so that when you tried to vote and it was almost impossible to vote, or they're just super yeah. slow. Was that when you like realized that? It sounds like that was a big kind of realization. Yeah, yeah. How messed up it was. And at that moment, when we just. Uh, it was another time when we just realized that okay, we are gonna live more uh, five years more with this uh, dictator. Then uh, people just starting to what what should we do now? And one of my friend just asked me, "You are in Poland, yeah? Uh, the police can catch you. So create. Uh, can you please create the group and some messenger?" To help people, just you know, to collect a lot of people from our little town to discuss how we can do other things to just starting to destroy and just make some movements to destroy the system. Yeah. Got it. So because you were in Poland, you were yeah, safe yeah. from the yeah, police, yeah, so you could start safe, it. And I can just create the group. Yeah, uh, and I did it, and but I didn't text anything there. I just uh, marked the administrator there. I just make some trick, and I just started to. Um, make uh, administrator like a random people, like almost everyone, you know, just like a, to disappear. Who is the main one? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. If And a thousand I, people are the admin, yeah, then yeah. no one's the admin. And there was like a like three thousand and five hundred people in the group. Yeah. But in my little town, it's like a 
25,000 people living. So it, it's it's a lot, Peter. It's yeah. a lot of people. Everyone was uh, like, you know, not agree with this situation. And everyone uh, wanted to do something like uh, going uh, to, to the streets and just making some protests and something. Uh, yeah. And then uh, we have, uh, st we still have in Belarus and in, uh, in, in Russia, K KGB. And that people, that's uh, community or not, just like a, a secret police. Yeah? yeah. And they has to control uh, some kind of uh, stuff like I did, like uh, creating the group and starting to just making movements to destroy the system because they're like a security for the system. Mm -hmm. They're trying to catch people who thinks a different way and just starting to make other people to think a different way because it's just making a lot of problems for the system. And it's just uh, so that's their work to find these people who are just trying to destroy the system. Yeah, and then uh, it happened like uh, after a month uh, when I created the group, my class, my uh, classmate teacher, yeah, from my school, texted to me that the police came to school for uh, some documents about you, like, you know, characteristics about you. Okay. Yeah, they were trying to find some information about me, um, about my childhood, how was I, uh, how I was acting at school mm. when I was... Uh, All your records from school yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Everything like this. And that was the first sign that it's, it's getting bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the situation is going uh, under control. <laughs> so, and then... Uh, when they just uh, collect, collected some information about me, they just uh, realized that I'm not in Belarus, but they somehow they have uh, they have to affect on me to stop these uh, things that I were doing. And they did the bad things. They came to my father's work, mm. yeah, uh, came to uh, my father's boss, because it's all system. It, it, that's how it works. And they said to my father's boss that uh, you have uh, some employee and this employee has a son and this son doing the bad things. Wow. So you should do something about that. So they're just starting to um, say something, not directly, but like uh, make my father know uh, that you have to calm down your son because he's doing the bad things. And uh, if you're not do something about this, if you're not going to do about this something, you will lose your job Wow! like this. Yeah, wow. that's how it works. This system, it's every time like uh, they don't care about your parents. They're just doing the bad things it's like a uh, criminal. So, yeah, it's now it's the perfect time to say that in Belarus, in Russia, the police or KGB, it's not like a police in the US or in Europe. It's like a criminals who works for the government. Wow. That's how it works. Yeah. They can use uh, laws or how they want, you know. They can create even like, uh, they can, if you do something wrong, but there's no laws to, to put you in a prison, they will find out, they will put something to your pocket and they will put you in a prison anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. So, uh, and then it's just starting to make a lot of problems about this. Uh, and I, to save my uh, father's work, I had to close the group in the sure. messenger and just uh, say uh, to everyone that it's it has to be closed. I have a reason for this. Yeah, and I just closed the group. And for this, um, after also like a three months, I was going to go uh, back to home in Belarus. And I was nervous about this situation because it was just like fully silent. No, no information about how, what, what, what is going on there. Are they searching for me or not? I have no people. I, I don't, I didn't have people to find out some information about. Are they searching for me? Can I come home or not? And so I just said to myself, I want to go home because I feel that people there needs me. Mm. They need me. And I just uh, said to myself, okay, I will go home. And then I, uh, I came to, I came back to Belarus. Yeah. And it was like uh, February, maybe. Yeah. I came there 
no problem, no police. After even a month, two months, it was silence. I was just doing my stuff like work, photography and everything like, but I did all this stuff, photography and uh, some kind of uh, business like uh, uh, I bought some uh, subboards, uh, stand up with a pedal oh, yeah. for uh, for giving people like for rent uh, for money. Yeah, like kind of business, but I didn't uh, make some uh, documents for this. Yeah, but it's okay. A lot of people do the same thing like this in Belarus and it's okay every time. So I just started to live like a normal life, like I did before. Yeah, and it's, time was going and going and it was already summer. And then I just uh, started to think about that, uh, about the future. So it's summer. Yes, I can live uh, this summer here because I can work as a photographer and uh, running some little business. Yeah. But there's uh, winter is coming, yeah, and we have a cold winter, yeah. so I will I won't have a work as a photographer because it's not a good season mm. for this. Also, not a good season for running like a subboards business. Sure. Yeah. No, and one, I, no, no one wants to be on a lake on a surfboard. When yeah, it's yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just started to think about the making a visa to go to Poland and uh, for work as a sushi cook because I have some skills and and I also worked already there, so uh, I have uh, people and friends there who can help me with work there. So uh, I just applied for visa, and after two days, the KGB came to. Um, my father uh, yard, which is uh, a bit abroad the town. Yeah, we call it dacha. It's like a, where you can just came there and work like a garden stuff, but you cannot live there. It's like a place where just you can just spend some time and uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, but why they came there? Because uh, we have also some stupid laws in Belarus. If you do not work, you have to pay money to government. You see, it's like upper side. It's like upper side. Yeah, we have the law. If you do not work, that that means you you will work somewhere, like not legally, and you have to pay money for this wow. because they know that you you cannot be just like unemployed and live without uh, money. Yeah. So it means that you work somewhere, or even abroad or like remotely for other countries, and you have to pay money yeah. because we need some oh, taxes from you. That's incredible. In America, unemployment pays you. Yeah, yeah. In, in Soviet Russia or in Belarus, you pay unemployment. Yeah, That's yeah. insane. Because they like think uh, for two steps for uh, ahead. Yeah. Like, they know they know that you have some work because uh, it's like uh, I don't know. They like a criminals. You and know, like that, a I mafia. Mean, is that pretty much true? Like, if most people who aren't working, like. They've got some other side hustle or something yeah, like that. Oh, well, th that's about this. Uh, so if you have your, your your own yard or you work as a on oh. a farm or something, that's okay. You you can just go to government uh, buildings or something where people doing some documents. You just apply for the for that that you're working on a farm or you're just like a creator of something, yeah. Or even if you're a photographer, you can just pay a little bit of taxes mm -hmm. and they won't touch you, yeah. So my father just uh, made made some documents that I'm working on his yard abroad the uh, town, so that I'm like uh, me like a farmer. Farmer, yeah. Yeah. So the KGB came to my father yard. <laughs> they just found the document that I'm not because uh, I have um, a passport. You know, uh, when when you live somewhere and you have uh, special documents that you live there. Yeah. Yeah. Like residency. Papers. Yeah. 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 So, but I also have my own apartment, but I didn't live there. Uh, my aunt uh, with with her, with her, her family li still live there. So they they just uh, knew that I am not living I wasn't living there, yeah, and then just they just started to find more information where they can find me. But I was living in my grandma apartment, <laughs> and nobody like even a lot of my friends uh, didn't know where I lived. So they came to my father yards, abroad the town, and starting to I in the, uh, that moment uh, my father was there. And they just starting to ask about where is uh, Archie, mm. where can I, where where we can find him. 
So, but my father immediately just asked them back, uh, are you going to put him in a prison or some reason for this or something? And they said, no, no, it's going to be okay. But nobody believed them. It's just everybody knows that do not believe the KGB. They always trying to some yeah. trick you. Yeah. yeah. So my father immediately called me and said that they're going to come to my grandma apartments. So prepare something like uh, cleaning the phone and uh, deleting some information which they won't like or something. Yeah. And I was ready for visiting uh, of him, yeah, of them. And uh, then they came to, to my uh, grandma uh, apartments and it was just like a casual conversation like uh, that they have a uh, special techniques because they passed some special academy for KGB and they have some skills like uh, you know just making friends mm. making like a friendship between you to make you more soft and talk like a true every time and they uh, they de don't give you time to think more about how to uh, how you should act in the future and like you know do not uh, like uh, come up with ideas how you can lie them or something and that's why they're just asking a lot of questions which is not about the the visiting you know it's mm -hmm. like about have you tried to study uh, have you tried to study it, uh, programming or something and you just like uh, you're blowing your mind well, why are you asking this question or about the yards of my father how how much does it cost or something like this they're just trying to um like mess with your head yeah yeah to get you to maybe make a yeah. mistake and yeah, make yeah, something yeah, yeah. or they're just trying to uh, keep you on uh, truth like uh, do not come up with idea how to lie them or something yeah and every time and also uh, it, it looks like they're trying to be friend mm. friendly with you but also they're just making like a uh, a trick with you because and then we were when we were driving to the to their office they were just uh, asking me like a question you know like uh, how is it going your business like they know that it's not a legal business i i don't have a document for this and it's a question how is it going your business in a lake and is it going well how many how much money do you earn already or how is that how about your photography skills and how is it going so they're just like uh, like making you a bit a little bit scared of they know about you everything right yeah yeah some kind of also tricks yeah and then uh uh, when we get uh, when we got the, their office, they put a camera in front of me to record all conversation to see how I am answering them, uh, my reaction, my uh, am I nervous or, or not, and something like this. I think about this. Yeah, <laughs> I think that, that's how it works. Yeah, so they put some uh, camera up in front of me and just starting to ask us about some questions about the group which I uh, created in the past and about administration because some of people who was uh, administ administrators in my group yeah mm. they just after i closed the group they created their own groups mm. and just starting to run it but for them it's new work you know they have to find the these people and uh, just uh, to to do something with them to not uh, run in more of these uh, such groups yeah, and they just uh, say to me like directly. So there's two options. You will help us to identify these people. Yeah, where they are, all information about them and everything. Or you're the last who, you know, just if we, if we won't find some information about them, you're the last one like uh, you're gonna take all. You're gonna take all the blame. Yeah, yeah. you will take the all the blame of this shit. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and they put in a, a sheet of lease, yeah, and uh, I was uh, writing down with a pen some, uh, like, uh, I don't know what is it, but I was uh, writing there, I I am uh, the RT, uh, the full name of me, yeah, and that I'm gonna help, uh, like, <laughs> it's like a stupid Soviet Union uh, letter, you know, yeah. that I'm gonna help you to catch these people, uh, like, uh, and uh, I'm not gonna 
tell anybody about this and such a, it's like a stupid KGB Soviet Union things I was just writing down of course I'm not gonna follow these uh, <laughs> things that I wrote, wrote down already yeah yeah and uh, after this they just starting to work with me like you know I, I, I after this conversation and everything I left the office and then we just uh, they just give me th some context of them which I have to text some information about how is it going because I had to uh, make a contact with uh, these people who are still running some uh, yeah. groups. So they, they, they were trying to turn you into an informant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like this. Wow. Yeah, but I didn't want to do this and I didn't want to just uh, put someone in the risk or something. Yeah, so that was a nervous week in my life that was just a super nervous week because uh, i was waiting for my passport for visa to escape the country yeah uh, but i have to play with them i had to play with them th this game and uh, to just win some time sure yeah. because if they thought you were not going to help them they they were going to yeah. Make, yeah. make it so you couldn't leave yeah so uh and that game it just started and i was just playing this game but i didn't want it to as i said to put someone's uh, lives in the risk so yeah. uh, i just started to think how i can handle all these uh, things and win some time for for me to to get my passport back with the visa so i just started to uh oh yeah my grandpa also has a phone and I just created an uh, account in some uh, special manager, Russian manager, um, and uh, just started to text these people uh, whom I have to text from my phone. You know? Is it right? Is it correct? Yeah. Yeah. And then I just started to text it from the other phone to them that now I'm going to text it to you. I, I am who I am. Yeah. 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 And, and I'm just uh, I'm going to text it to you from my phone and asking you uh, some kind of questions. But you have to keep uh, going on the special scenario, which I am going to and I just texted the special scenario, how they have to, have to answer me back. Yeah. So it was just like a plane, wow. like a for two wheels, wilds, right? wheels like uh playing a football yeah but on a two oh. on two uh fields right oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like, like you... on a two playgrounds <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah so you you use your grandmother's phone to text your friends so yeah. that you could tell them what the game was yeah and then because the kgb was going to be monitoring your phone exactly. your friends had to know that you weren't <laughs> Being yeah. completely on the level with that, but then the KGB couldn't know. So yeah, it's just Jesus, a, yeah, yeah, it's just a difficult game, and it worked. It worked <laughs> successfully. Like really, they just uh, they started to believe the KGB started mm -hmm. to believe me that I'm doing uh, things for them. Yeah. Uh, but the people there just starting to realize that I uh, someone else texting from my phone. So it was just like uh, making a safe play. Uh, Say making a safe like uh, I don't know something safe uh, pillow for me, yeah, and yeah. it it was uh, super hard because it was so nervous. I almost didn't sleep, uh, didn't sleep these days, uh, waiting for my passport and playing this game. And also you, need, uh, I needed to make some feedbacks to them. Yeah, how was it going? How they are answering me and uh, sending them yeah. some screenshots of my phone? How is it going? Yeah, wow. and so just uh, it was a nervous. And after I just um, get my passport back with a visa, uh, we have like a website of uh, police or something, and you can just uh, f uh, find yourself there and uh, can check. If they, if you are allowed to leave the country or not? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We have some kind of like yeah, uh, red light, green light. Yeah, yeah. And I just uh, found that I, uh, I am allowed. I was allowed to leave the country. So there's, there wasn't something just like you know, yeah. And uh, when I just got the passport, I left the country like uh, in a, in one day. <laughs> yeah. But my all of my stuff was already prepared for yeah. this. And I was just uh, the the question was just about uh, how to leave uh, by airplane mm. 
or just a train or just a bus because uh, easy easy way to do this it's like uh, in, on a bus yeah buy tickets on the bus so i, I did uh, but also it's just uh, it's not so easy to leave the country because the government also prepared the special system that if you want to leave the uh, abroad of belarus to poland you have to have with you some special documents from um employer uh, from the bus in Poland that you are gonna really work for him okay and and it's not just only like uh, in a Polish because Polish and Bel in Belarusian languages uh, we use we use the different um, alphabet yeah yeah not an alphabet like uh, they they use a uh, Latin yeah and we use a Kyrillic Kyrillic yeah. so the so letters look real different yeah and also I, I needed to prepare the uh, translated uh, list of documents about <laughs> that the boss in uh, Poland wanted to hire me and it's like I, and it's I, I did it just for one day just wow. all translated I found there are people who can make a translate for me and with a special sign of it that it's just because oh, yeah, you didn't actually have these documents you just made them yeah yeah, yeah I made them <laughs> yeah exactly I bought them <laughs> these documents I bought them all also it wasn't uh, illegal yeah one it was always a black market yeah. yeah so so you were so you were trying to leave Belarus you were playing games with the KGB trying to save your friends and faking your documents to get yeah. out so yeah I can imagine it's you like, weren't a, sleeping. like what, what did you think was likely to happen to you if they'd figured out what you were doing I think they were just uh, put me on a uh, jail first of all then just uh, uh, did something like uh, I wasn't uh, I I didn't I haven't done yeah but they were trying to yeah. they would uh, make some uh, something that something to put me in a prison they w would find the reason right for this yeah they would have yeah. framed you they would have planted evidence yeah. or whatever made up yeah. the story they are allowed to do everything in in our country like oh like a criminals but legal criminals uh, which works uh, that works for government so yeah that was um, when i just uh, was crossing the board <laughs> between belarus and poland and I, when i passed the uh, belarusian uh, post yeah, yeah i was just like uh, the most happy <laughs> happiest man in the world because i was just like a quick scale and it was like I escaped this it's like a really not like I think it's not so difficult like uh, living there North North Korea right <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a bit similar yeah. like uh, on the minimals <laughs> of it yeah wow. That wow, what a story. I mean the way you explained it it sounded like in 2020 is when the light kind of went on for you to like oh this isn't cool what, did you have an inkling before then that you didn't like the way the system was working like like i don't know oh, Could, yeah. wait because how, how old were you in 2020 how old uh no 24 22 okay 22 um and so like in so before then and then even like in high school were you thinking along the lines of yeah. hey this is kind of messed up and i think yes uh, it's all about our generation because because my generation and uh, my all of my friends we were growing up with the internet so we could see the how people live in other countries uh, mm. so it's just uh, when you live in a ex soviet union country where is everything is stupid and has to be disciplined by system yeah you just starting to uh, to feel this annoying things like uh, why we cannot just live like uh, other people like a fr be free and just uh, like a democratic and we can just discuss something or if i am not agree with something why i cannot say it loud on the streets and why police can catch me about this i don't know just it, you a lot of questions just starting to come into yeah. you in your head and just uh, that something is going not good yeah maybe it works it worked uh, before with my parents when they didn't have internet and they couldn't find some information how people uh, live in uh, lived in the other countries and how is it going but now we can see 
we have internet the internet so that's why in uh, russia and belarus we just say you know it uh, bless you god yeah but now we can say bless you internet because <laughs> internet just helped us to to just change our mindset about what is going on what is what is it going in our country so yeah it, it started from school because school in our uh, system of school uh, in belarus also still works as a as it was in Soviet Union, when it's just, you know, um, showing respect to teachers, like they're, it's like from childhood, they're trying to teach you to be like a, like a slave, you know, because uh, every time they're just like uh, programming your mind, they're trying to program your mind from childhood, they were trying to uh, teach you there's someone is also above you, like on a level so when teacher came to class everyone has to stand up mm. showing respect if you want to leave the class for to go to toilet you have to ask like uh, uh grow in your hand yeah and ask can i go to toilet it's like uh, from childhood they're trying to like a uh, program your your mind your mindset so it's like uh every time it's just uh, if you're like i don't know uh, open mind man yeah and you can compare how people live there and how and how uh, we live here yeah. and just trying to find out how better uh, which way is better yeah. right yeah and yeah it's it started from the school that uh, i didn't like the system how it works why uh, if i did a lot of mistake if i do a lot of mistake in school and why i'm bad people I'm not a I'm not a bad human if I do a lot of mistake, but they're trying to make you and uh, like mark you. You're a bad uh, student because you 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 um, you don't uh, study like other other good uh, kids do. So it's like a kind of system, and you, I, some people like me started started to realize that something wrong with this system. <laughs> it works not good for me. I I feel bad living this this way like other people live but other people like i don't know like um, bio robots you know they're just uh, accepting this programming yeah. and just uh, living this way and it's okay and they believe in a propaganda that uh, only bad people lives in america or something it's just like a stereotype stereotype of every sure. time that they're uh, in america people uh, carrying the guns or <laughs> everything like this and it's not good we we cannot live like they live yeah. so it's like a propaganda from the childhood yeah yeah and but the most uh, important part for me when i just uh, said to myself i don't want to live here i i cannot do anything with this alone but i also don't want to spend my time living in this uh, such a mess place yeah yeah and it it happened to me when i came to army Soviet Union, it still works the same way, Soviet Union army, whereas everything is disciplined and you're like a slave. Sure. Yeah, it's it, because also I can I could uh, watch some movies from uh, US and I could see how um, uh, Americans, soldiers, uh, how they live and how is it going in army there and how is it going here. It's like a prison, you know, uh, because you have a every day you have a schedule of everything wake up at 6 a.m at 6 a.m and five minutes you're gonna be on a, a huge place where everyone is standing and it's just exercising in the morning after exercising you you'll go and make your bed making your bed after this it's like a time by time you have a schedule uh, all the day and you are living this way like a, a year in health yeah god yeah you live like a, on a system they're trying to make your system guy every time and so when i met uh, this situation when i came to army and i just uh, saw the how the system like you know i just came to core of system yeah i just yeah. saw how it works and just like uh, starting to realize how this all system works how is the government works and it's just like a core of system you can just see because there's a lot of discipline about this and you can just um, compare and with the other countries and it's just yeah i just came to a core of the system
Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it, it's so stupid when you just, you know, um, when you did something uh, not good for the officers, yeah? And they can do with you like almost everything, just like uh, uh, make some comment to you to make a push ups till you just get tired and lo- uh, or just uh, awake or sleep or something like this. It's yeah. just a super stupid system. Like, I don't know, but I, I hate it all the time. But also is uh, usual when people just uh, meet when people meet some, uh, you know, troubles in life. Mm it always make uh, it always makes them stronger because you just uh, going through something that you don't want to go yeah and it makes you stronger and stronger in your mindset it makes and also you started to find uh, people who also think a different way that you do that you do and you just starting to be friends and close and discussing this and helping starting to help each other in some situation when someone just uh, get some problem with something and you're just starting to like uh, help each other yeah uh, so also I got a lot of uh, skills from army I met a lot of people like uh, from stupid some from the most stupid people I've ever met <laughs> to the most uh, to the most smartest people I've ever met because there's a lot of people like you know we live uh, in one building and the, I left I lived with a, on a second on a fir- first floor, yeah, and uh, it's like a huge building, and we all live like uh, two hundred people in one place, and we live there, we we lived there like for a year and a half wow. together, yeah. You just uh, went to sleep with your friend near because his uh, bed nearby your. Bed. Yeah. and you woke up at the same time with him and doing the same things like everybody uh, everybody does there so it's just um, it's system it's like a really it's like a prison but pe- uh, you cannot call it prison because it's army and also about the army in uh, Belarus and also in the Russia it works the same way yeah, uh, you cannot say that I ah, I don't I don't want to go to army. It doesn't yeah. work like this. Yeah, you just yeah. you came uh, to some uh, doctors, which is uh, making some uh, medicine and uh, analysis about your body. How is, uh, yeah. do you have some uh, yeah. uh, sickness or something? Yeah, and if you just passed every one of them, you will go. Mm. You you, you don't have, have to a choice. Yeah, you don't have a chair uh, another. Uh, choice you know and it works like everybody has to go so you don't have you don't have a choice I want to go or not you will go if you're if you're uh, strong enough and everything is good with your health yeah yeah you will go uh-huh. to army that's how it works a lot that's why you uh, I can I could uh, meet a lot of people there from uh, who just who just passed the university or who just uh, finished the school it's like a range of uh, age from uh, 18 to 27 okay. all, all guys yeah. all men's uh, men who is uh, from 18 to 27 has to go to army if wow. you're good enough or if you have a kids yeah and the in your kid uh, is about like uh, from one year to three years mm-hmm. you can stay home okay. you have a reason to stay home because you, you have to pay uh, you know just work for family and something yeah this is the one way to live to make a <laughs> to baby <have> kids. yeah <laughs> so if you just have young kids from the time you're 18 to 27 yeah you some can people do not this. go okay yeah, wow. some people do this <laughs> yeah Jeez, what a choice. <laughs> so yeah. so you didn't want to go to the army? Yeah. Uh, originally, or did you, did you have uh, any thoughts for, about uh, it? Originally, I had a reason to go to army because I just passed my college. Mm. And this uh, the story about new stupid things in Belarus. When I just passed um, my college, it was like a, a year of studying, electricity college. Okay. And after you study, uh, the study is for free in Belarus but after you finish it that's why we have to go to to army it's like a system uh, we give you a, a free study yeah. but you have to pay for us like uh, going to army and serve army so 
Uh, I just uh, passed my col college and I had to work uh, for government with this uh, work, like electricity, um, electric man. Yeah, I had to work uh, a year in health for government. Yeah, to okay. just uh, to like, you know, they they gave me opportunity to study for free. Now I have to had to work for them for a year and a half. It's a system that yeah. also how it works. But uh, my work was suck, <laughs> like really, because it was a village nearby my little town. And people who live in Alivich, it's just uh, usually I think it's it works everywhere. They just uh, go there. They're going to work and after work, they're drinking uh, alcohol <laughs> or something like this. So it's uh, the same situation. And people there is just uh, in the village. It's uh, not not the smart people <laughs> which uh, whom I ever met. Yeah. Yeah. So and also the problem was that I Every time I had to go to work by bicycle, and this uh, distance was, took uh, like uh, or almost an hour to get my work. Yeah, and all it was it was also not a uh, good things about this work. And work was suck, and I was just uh, for the first time when it, it was my first uh, month of working there, and I just started to getting bored there because uh, electric electric works um, uh, i i can do i could do but there wasn't uh, there wasn't work for me ah. because everything works uh, good <laughs> nothing was broken yeah, was yeah and time. i was just sitting on a laptop but the the boss of this um like uh, kind of job in a in a little village uh he every time he, when he uh, arrived to to job he told to me he told to me that you should do something else not electricity but you can just go and do with other people like uh, physical work but i said to him every time that i am electric i'm electric I, if you if we will have some work with electricity i can work because yeah. i'm electric yeah. so yeah but anyway just <laughs> go away from me yeah I, I if if you have work for me as electric so that's why um it's just uh, becoming some problems between us you know <laughs> so it, we just started to uh, agree with each other to argue argue yeah, yeah with each other and uh, so he was mad on me yeah yeah and uh, also, I just started to get bored with this work because I'm just sitting on a laptop and then I had to go by bicycle back home with the bicycle on a bicycle. So I just started to go, uh, I just started to go home early <laughs> than the time which works finished. Yeah. And also we worked on a Saturday, but I didn't want to work on Saturday. Yeah, so I just started to to not go for, <laughs> to for work on Saturday, and it's just uh, like a, it, it's starting to become a problem. And uh, he just uh, how to say it uh, when uh, hire on the he, other, he fired person. you. Yeah, <laughs> he just fired me from this work, and that's why um, I have two options: going to army. And if I will go to army, uh, problem with um, working for government uh, has to be covered. Okay. Yeah, like it's like a, a equal. If yeah. you will go to army or you will work for government. Got but, it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. If the, I won't, they'll go take to, it either yeah, way. Yeah. yeah. If, army, army or electric job, it's fine. Yeah. 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 If I won't go to um, army, I will have to find the other job, which is uh, okay for government, yeah, and I will pay some taxes for them by working on this work, or I will have to pay full amount of money which is needed uh, for study, yeah, for my course of study, yeah. So uh, I had to, I had, uh, sure. I had, I had a reason to go to army. It was the least bad option you had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why I went to army <laughs> to cover this. Yeah. Now, uh, and in in the army, you had a choice of uh, you. You had at least one choice yeah. in the army, right? Yeah. Can you tell me about that choice? Uh, about uh, yeah. you know, about bazooka. So yeah, <laughs> uh, when you came to army, there is some special test which can uh, 
uh, which can uh, find out uh, who who are you can be more useful there. You so there's a special some tests which you can find out. Can you be a good sergeant mm. or not? But I can I couldn't be a good surgeon. Not like, a good surgeon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's why it's just like a sorting, you know. Yeah. From the beginning in the army, they started to sort in people who can be the good. Or if you have a license for driving, you can be a driver of a tank or something okay. or some uh, things like this. Or if you have a good uh, view, yeah. Good vision. Good vision. If yeah. you get uh, have a good vision, you can be. Um, like uh, it's a big gun uh, above a tank, mm. which is uh, like thirty millimeters uh, yeah. armor. Yeah. So there's a special tests uh, which you can find. So I uh, I passed. Uh, no, not passed. Like uh, how to say? Failed. It? Yeah, I failed all this test. <laughs> and if you failed all this test, you go like. Uh, like uh, just a casual soldier if you you're just like a uh, nothing on your yeah yeah you're just uh, in that in this case you have uh, like uh, any options like uh, the man who goes with a sniper gun mm -hmm. the man who goes with a bazooka the man who goes with a, a gun which is uh, which shooting like a fa so fast yeah yeah machine gun yeah machine gun or the other also machine gun but with a different uh, gun it's there's two options of machine gun yeah. which is where you're carrying the big one or yeah. a little one but go uh, which is uh, shooting directly and you can just you know not like a yeah yeah, yeah. so th there's four options and <laughs> the sniper is uh, not about me because I uh, I had a uh, bad vision okay. before operation, so I had a bad vision. So sniper is not for me. Uh, the machine gun also couldn't work for me well because it's also you have to see the uh, the person and the <laughs> special things. So the other the left options for me left options for me was uh, a bazooka gun, <laughs> bazooka man, <laughs> because the distance to to the tank is not so. Uh, not so long, yeah? yeah. Not so far. It's like a not not more than a three hundred meters. Okay. So it's just easy to shoot with the. And you're shooting big targets, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and <laughs> the target is a big one, so it's easy, <laughs> easy option. So, uh, you sh be honest, I I didn't make a choice. It was just uh, okay. obvious for me. Yeah. <laughs> to to be a bazooka man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, so uh, before first shooting we had some classes like uh, theory of how is it how it works uh, there's some rules uh, some uh, f safeties uh, how to how to do this and uh, not to not kill somebody yeah. <laughs> so uh, we passed all these things good I just uh, I studied how to use the optical on the bazooka because uh, bazooka also has an optical mm -hmm. yeah and so uh, the first uh, it's also because of the system is so stupid you cannot uh, you, you, I couldn't know exactly the first time when it's gonna happen and also I I, have, I, I didn't have a opportunity to buy uh, special things uh, for my ears. Earplugs. Earplugs, yeah. Earplugs, yeah. yeah. Ear protection. Yeah, I didn't have a chance to buy it because uh, we're, all, we're all all the time we're just in a closed area. I cannot just leave it without some... Uh, it's just only special days when you can leave the... And it was your job to get ear protection? Yeah, yeah, it was my job, yeah. What? That's how it works. It's super system. It's yeah. all every time like this. Yeah, the all equipment in the army in Belarus it's so old. It's from eighties or something. The guns also from eighties. On my gun there was a date like a nineteen eighty six. Just imagine it's from That's Soviet the year Union. I was born. <laughs> yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah. So um, I had to buy some airplugs for me for myself but I couldn't do this because I didn't have a chance I didn't have a time for this and my my father couldn't uh, visit me at the right time so I didn't have a uh, earplugs for the first time and we were in a 
the place where where is a special place oh. when we can just shoot. Yeah, shooting range. Yeah, shooting range where only soldiers can be, and uh, when it's shooting time, uh, all this area is just like uh, surrounded by people who is just controlling to not allow other people came uh, come into this yeah. area. That's it. Yeah, so it was the first time of uh, shooting from the bazooka, and I didn't have an airplex. So it was, uh, and we were all standing in a, in a hall, like a long hall. Okay. Yeah, like, uh, I don't know how it calls also, trench, trench. Oh, trench. Yeah, yeah. trench, like a trench, and all uh, sitting on its own, uh, his own position. Yeah, because everyone has it, his own position. And uh, I was sitting, and uh, on my right, there was a sergeant, and I asked him, I didn't. I don't have a uh, airplex. What should I do now? It's the first shoot, and I don't have because everyone has to have. And he said to me, and it's almost like you know, it's, it was like a, a five minutes before shooting, you know. <laughs> and I can just, I, I couldn't just say to officer or something because it's stupid rules. It's just like a system has to keep going, and you cannot just like say stop, stop, guys. I don't have a earplugs. No, it doesn't work like this. Don't not like I have to say. Nobody cares about sure. do you have it or not. Yeah, it was like I your, care what your feelings. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> shut up and shoot. Them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have your uh, like how was it when it the uh, the special things like we shoot in usually we shoot it in a tank. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, when it's just a training, there's a from uh, may like um, form of tank. Yeah. Which made which is made by wood and the uh, white uh, piece of material. Well, and then you can just see is it went through or not. Yeah. Yeah. So and it works like this. You just yeah. Uh, for the first time, you you cannot see anything, and then it's just like it hinges yeah, up. It hinges up, yeah. yeah. And then I see. So it was uh, before five minutes when my hinges when your target was gonna yeah, hinge yeah, up, yeah, when it was gonna appear out of the ground. Yeah, exactly. You can't not shoot at it. Yeah, yeah. And I asked the surgeon, "What should I do now? I don't have." And he was a good guy, and just he just said to me, "I'm I'm sorry, but." All I can do for you is just give you two filters from cigarettes <laughs> and you can just cover your air by, by the filters of cigarettes. <laughs> and I did it and I still have, uh, and I still was hearing uh, everything is, yeah. is with them or without them. It, it, it was the same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was <laughs> the same. So uh, I just did it. I just shoot it. I had uh, four. I uh, think like uh, four, four rackets, yeah, yeah. four rackets, yeah, f it was my first uh, four rackets and I did it and uh, the only one uh, um, advice which I uh, ke was keeping in my mind that when you're shooting from the bazooka, you have to keep uh, opening your mouth because the sound is just, if it goes, it has to have a way out. Yeah. So it, it would be good if you are st uh, trying to keep your mouth open in this moment. So I just did it. And in the next two days after the shooting, I was just hearing in my uh, ear, just like every time, like for two days after oh this. God. Yeah, and some people just uh, hurt to their air, uh, air sometimes it happens accidentally when people also do like this without airplugs you know, because I uh, have a friend also he's from army and he was just uh, uh, sh he was shooting from the bazooka and something happened to his air some mm. kind of problems this sound it didn't uh, stop uh, like yeah yeah it this didn't sound go it didn't, away. Yeah. yeah and it's some kind of problems uh, with the ears and so he he had to go out from army because he had a pro problem yeah. with it and nobody cares about that nobody just put something medicine or documents yeah. it's just like a hidden okay you have this problem we just let you out from the army oh, wow. and you live your life like you want <laughs> yeah that's how it works that's it's true. a stupid system wow but your ears are fine now 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, now I'm fine and I have a video about shooting that uh, that makes me happy every time and I saw. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that video was amazing. I'm gonna link to it in the show yeah. notes. <laughs> yeah, because it is in, in Instagram, yeah, yeah. You can just link it. <laughs> awesome. Um I was thinking about well a, a couple things. So you grew up pretty close to uh, Chernobyl, right? Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. We also uh, people from my uh, little town. It's so close to Chernobyl. It's like a, I think it's about uh, two hundred and fifty kilometers to Chernobyl. So it's so close to to Chernobyl. Yeah, and uh, all people in my little town has a special document about that. I w um, I was born in the territory where is a, a high level of. Uh, Radiation, right? Yeah, but no, no, it's not so high to to not live there. Yeah. But you have to uh, pass some tests, some tests every year. So you have to check yourself. Uh, how is it going in your body? Is it yeah. good or not? Because we have like a, a little bit higher level than other people, than other countries yeah. and areas has. So they want to keep 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 track of it. Yeah. That's uh, that's crazy because I was. I was born uh, on the day that the yeah. Chernobyl disaster yeah. happened, April 26, 1986. Um, and uh, I used to call my birthday Sh Chernobyl Fest <laughs> just because I thought it was funny until I read a book about it and I learned a lot more about it. And like, it was so messed up. I, I stopped doing that because I'm like, God, that was awful. Like, yeah. and, and not just not, not just like the disaster itself, but how it was handled, you know, like it was made from what I read, it was made so much worse yeah. than it needed to be, you know, from like just the, the soldiers and the people who were just sent in with nothing to mm -hmm. clean it up. Yeah. It's just like really uh, a lot of people just uh, sacrifice right? yeah. their lives yeah. to save other lives. Yeah. More. It's, yeah, it's a big problem, and it's, uh, also this problem just happened because of the stupid Soviet Union government and something like this. They were just trying to save more money for to, for the Cold War to just you know to win the Cold War. They were just trying to be faster than uh, America does. It's all stupid things, yeah. yeah. And it just happened because of the other people. I was thinking of our like. The, the similarities and differences between our lives. So, uh, I'm American. I was raised in California. And from a fairly early age, I was, like, <laughs> in a way similar to you, I was, um, I learned about some of the things that are messed up with America and ways the system was working that I didn't like it. You know, I graduated high school. In 2004, so like a lot of my friends went into the army and then they served tours in Iraq or mm -hmm, Afghanistan yeah. or whatever and things like that. And by the time I was in my mid 20s, you know, I was fairly, fairly critical of the system. Mm -hmm. And you said something a while ago, like uh, being uh, tr trying to be loud and protest the system and, and stuff yeah. like that. When I was, it was 2010, 2011, so I was around 24, 25, was when the, uh, the Occupy series of protests went around the US and I was working literally like a hundred meters from the Occupy Oakland mm -hmm. encampment right there. Like I could look out the window of my office and see them and um, I, I got involved with them because they were, <laughs> they were protesting just about everything. <laughs> um, uh, pretty much you name it. It was it was a, it was a buffet of protest uh, things. You know, if you wanted to be against police violence, mm -hmm. that was really big in uh, in uh, Occupy Oakland. If you wanted to be against capitalism, great, join the club. If you were for communism, that's fine too. Those guys are there too. <laughs> if you were against like climate change, if you wanted politicians to do more about climate change, they were all into that. Like everything uh, was there, and I was I was into a lot of it. Um, and, and so like during that period, like. I was protesting the system very loudly, you know, like mm. in the streets, like chanting, like all the stuff you see on TV and, and the police were very active, um, but kind of in a more American way, there was no yeah, KGB yeah. running around. Right. Um, like I was, I was in some protests and like we got, uh, tear gas and they shot, you know, bean mm -hmm. bag rounds and stuff like that at us. But I, one, one day the Occupy people had gotten kicked out of the plaza 
where mm-hmm. everyone's tents were. They'd gotten kicked out. They were trying to find a new place to set up a camp. Mm-hmm. And that was like the purpose of the day. No one knew where the spot was. And so there's this big group of hundreds of people marching around randomly through Oakland, like looking for a place to take over. And there was like thousands of cops, like so many cops and like anti-personnel carriers and like all this stuff. And, um, like literally all day. And I finally got tired and I I thought it was just going to fizzle out. So I went home, I got on my bike and I went home and I was following along on Twitter and what was going Mm -hmm. on. And like, uh, the, the group of protesters had nearly gotten kettled or like caught by the cops. And there was tear gas. I was like, Oh shit, you know, something's going on. I better get back down there. So I, I rode my bike back down to downtown Oakland joined up with the with with the protesters mm-hmm. I actually I got behind so that the cops were chasing the protesters mm-hmm. and I wanted to catch up with the protesters with my friends occupy friends so I had to run and I, I ran like through the cops <laughs> <laughs> to catch up <laughs> but uh, we we like we were going down a street and the cops were all behind us and then a row of cops, like goes across the next intersection in front of us and blocks it off. Mm-hmm. So we turn around and then a row of cops blocks off that. So we're, we're trapped in this street and they all, they, they rush in and they like push us all into this, well, this is corner basically. Mm-hmm. There's 450 of us. And then they just, they take the next many hours arresting us all. And there were so many of us that they didn't have enough buses to <laughs> transport us all to jail. So they, they, they took some like city buses, you know, just like normal commute buses and that, that was Saturday night, and I wound up, didn't get released until, like, early Monday morning. It was like, okay, you know, that happened. And it was, it was like, not a big deal, you know? We just got not even put into real jail. It was just, like, the tank where they put you when you get arrested. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just in a room with all my friends, and then they were just processing us to get us out of there. But, uh, like, six months later, I get a letter from the ACLU, which is the American Civil Liberties, uh, I forget what the U stands for, Union something. It, it had been technically a illegal arrest. Mm. And so there's a class action lawsuit and the ACLU sued the police. And everyone who got arrested that day got a settlement for 3,000 US dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so I made $3,000 <laughs> to get arrested and like protest the system. Yeah, not going <laughs> to happen, right? I mean, the whole thing, like like taking over public spaces, yelling, like there were, there were weekly marches that were anti-police, anti-police brutality, right? So like, and it was just a group of kids who would get together at like 10 p.m. on a Friday and go harass cops, right? And sometimes they get arrested because they'd be thrown stuff. It's whatever, super but. upside of us because you can just walk to from the work to get in trying to get your home, yeah? And there's some kind of prose- pro- protest and the police just catch you and put on a special bus also and just to put you in a prison for seven days or something like this wow. and after you uh, when you're gonna go out from the prison you also have to pay some taxes for it's like an opposite you see yeah it's a big difference between yeah. <laughs> between I gotta say, it's, it's pretty rare to get arrested in the united states and then get paid for it that's really rare <laughs> so, i didn't know <laughs> about that happen. i didn't know about that yeah because because technically in a protest situation in the u.s the cops have to announce that they have to say, this is an illegal gathering. You have mm-hmm. to leave. If you don't leave, we'll arrest you. And they have to say it multiple times. So everyone gets a chance to disperse yeah. is how it works. And they, they just were trying to catch us. And so they didn't, and I think they're doing it on purpose just to yeah. kind of demoralize people. But yeah. Now in you know, the situation in Russia, if you just uh, are going to go on the street and with the, it, it, even the there are some cases about that the people was just holding the uh, clear sheet of list, yeah, and there is nothing on it. Even no, no, not even a one letter on it, and you're just doing these movements like a showing up the list, and the police just catch you because it's already some no wow. like kind of uh, words to them. Just you don't have to, you cannot do this or something. They're just kidding. like a mafia. Yeah. Now it's like a criminal. As I said, it's a criminal who works for the government, but on a document or you have a special document that you're a policeman. <laughs> but it's just a, it's just a word. 
So it's sober or beside. Yeah. The, yeah, it's you uh, talking with you and hanging out, hearing your stories has, has made me definitely like more grateful for the system that I've come from, even though I'm, yeah, I am I have been so and am still critical of many aspects of it. I, I feel very fortunate to like to be able to have, you know, the freedoms that I do have to be able to loudly say and, and like splash all over the Internet how I really yeah. think and feel about things and not have like serious consequences for that. Because, yeah. I mean, like, like when's the next time you're going to go home? I don't know. Because I now it's for me now going home it's just like uh, putting myself in a prison just in you accepting this now I cannot go home I can go home but I know the result of it yeah. so now it's just uh, for myself I cannot go home yeah. and I cannot see my parents and my father and brothers yeah it's just now it's uh, impossible for me to get home but yeah. it's it, it there is a chance to get home but I don't want this scenario from my life yeah yeah you said something about like cutting up an army card oh yeah yeah so when it started about the war because russia attack attacked it uh to ukraine yeah, yeah? they attack ukraine so and uh position uh belarusian position belarus position of this situation it's like uh we depend on russia we can uh, and our president is a uh, close not a friend, but he also depend on Russia. So Russian uh, soldiers just came to our uh, uh, to our lands and just uh, settled up there and just making the army camps there and just uh, starting to um, push uh, rockets. Just uh, yeah, launch. Yeah, yeah, launch the rockets to Ukraine from our lands. Oh wow! Yeah, and we cannot do the police. Nobody just cares about that, and people also cannot do something with this because if you're just say something loud about this that it's not i i'm i'm not agree with this i just want to stop this i don't want to arm russian army shooting to ukraine with the rockets from my town because uh, nearby my little town there is um uh also there's army uh, yards like uh poly like yeah, yeah. there are people also serve an army it's yeah. like close to like uh, I don't know, two kilometers from. Uh, okay. And it's uh, not just a casual army um, yards. Yeah, there is a special yards, but the uh, air, uh, airplanes. Can, oh yeah. Can so we call it like yeah. a like a, a military base. Yeah, a military airfield. base. Yeah, yeah. with airfield. Yeah. So that's why Russian uh, tech, uh, Russian just. Uh, army equipments the machines and something like this and the rockets also they're just shooting from my uh, nearby my little town wow. the rockets and it's just flying it's flying to ukraine and it just uh, and people live there and cannot do something with it if somebody just will if somebody just try to do something with this just say it loud or even in a make a post about this in the internet on instagram or something the police will come to you and just say what, what you don't like the situation what is going on in our country everything is all right if you don't like we can just find for you some uh, some room in a prison because you're not agree wow. with the situation yeah Oh yeah, about my army id so yeah. when i passed the uh, when i went uh, Returned from the army, I have a army ID with uh, there is the information about where I served, uh, who I, I was there, like a bazooka man. <laughs> yeah, every every information about me. So it's like army ID, and if in case is, is uh, in case if war is going to be, I have army ID. I had to go to um, to protect the the country sure. they they recall you and yeah 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 after i have so uh i was in poland yeah and uh, in some uh channels there started to some people just started to bring some information about that the soon because the ukraine is uh, doing well and just like protecting uh, their lands and the situation with the uh, soldiers in russia it's a bad situation there are a lot of uh, a lot of people uh, still dying there because uh, people just lied 
they, they don't they don't have idea where they're going and then they are just uh, across in the road with the Ukraine and they just uh, starting to get the uh, comments to attack the Ukraine but they didn't know about it it's like uh, you know how wow. that works they just lied all the time that it's just a training it's just a training and then just uh, when they got the Ukraine lands they have to attack the Ukrainians, but they a lot of people there, a lot of young uh, people and young soldiers like me, just uh, uh, they're just uh, in the Ukraine lands and they didn't want it to be there. It's just like a, a big uh, lie for them and they're just uh, dying there because they are not prepared to war. They have no reason to war, you know, to fight. You have to f uh, have a reason. Yeah. Ukraine soldiers have a reason. They are protecting yeah. their lands. Yeah. It's our home and we're trying to protect it. That's why they're fighting well and just killing a lot of uh, Russian soldiers. So, uh, also there was some information in some channels uh, that uh, also some Russian or oh, Belarusian soldiers is also going to go, mm. is, is about to go to Ukraine because uh, Russian soldiers cannot uh, handle this situation well. So the Russian guys who uh, serve in army right now, or even people who already returned from the army, it's like a war situation and we, uh, some people have to go to war uh, for, to, to fight with the Ukraine, but what it's so stupid yeah. and I just wanted to to make some, I don't know, protest, but even uh, being in Poland. So I made, a, I made a video how I'm destroying my army ID on a video. Mm. And there is a comment about this, uh, uh, my comment uh, about uh, behind the video that this is my advice for the Russian guys so in i'm just i was just destroying my army id and it just uh, got famous like uh, for two days and it was just uh, super famous for like uh, a lot of comments there like uh, a lot of people just starting to writing down some stupid thing uh, like uh, how how y how will you find the job in belarus without because if you wanna if you're a young guy you have to have an army id okay. to get a work if you want to just go for work for government yeah. you have to have an army id or if you want to uh, go to driver school also you have to go to Mm. Um, uh, doctors and pass some uh, special list of doctors uh, that you're good for, to drive the car yeah so and some st stupid people just starting to text to the comments that how how you will live without the army ID and something and then I was just like blown my mind I'm not gonna live in this country it's just <laughs> like a, or you you cannot see the situation some people really just cannot recognize what is going on yeah. right now but some people also just write it I already did it or something like this so it's just I I think it's it make it made some sense. Yeah. for someone who is also open minded enough and it was just because I was afraid of uh, some young people like me who just cannot come up with the ideas how to save yourself in this situation because not everyone can say no I'm, I'm not I don't want to go to war and because they just said why why do you don't want to go to war or something that all again uh, it's again the stupid situation about the system the system yeah. works in a stupid way every time so i just wanted to protect some uh, young people like me to avoid this situation to go to war if you don't have a, a army id how we can go there no way so i just made this uh like uh, I don't know, it's like protests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But on social media. Yeah, yeah. Because now that I think about it, that was the thing. Uh, like in the Vietnam War, uh, American soldiers were famous for uh, burning their draft cards, which is yeah. the cards. It's like if there's a war, you have to go, kind of thing. Yeah, so, yeah similar. Yeah, yeah, and I did it. And after this, when the video became uh, famous, yeah, uh, my aunt, uh, who and she lives in my apartment. And the police also, KGB and police, all of them just came to my apartment and just uh, starting to make like a research, you know, when they can just research your apartment. Yeah. But it, they didn't it like, uh, 
like uh, for real they didn't need for real to research it. that was a sign for me ah. that we know that your your relatives live here yeah. so you have to come down man because we know where it's, it's like a yeah they were there we know where you it's live so dude weird. chill out yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah they didn't actually they weren't actually we looking know for where anything. you live and we we know so it's like a sign to me that uh, stop doing this because uh, your relatives still still live here mm -hmm. in Belarus, mm -hmm. and we can do something with that. Yeah. So it's also it's like I don't know how to explain this in English. This words how how the system works. You know, it's like so weird and so dirty, sh dirty system that it's just like a uh, evil system. They can uh, do something with your relatives, and that's why uh, be, uh, before it happens, before it happened. Uh, I did something that I texted to all of my relatives, my brothers, my father, and my aunt, that uh, if police will uh, will come for me, just uh, say them. Uh, you have to uh, say to them that we have agree with me. I just uh, maybe I met, I uh, went crazy or something. I met mad or something. That so we 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 don't have a contact with me. Mm. So I'm just doing something uh, that you're not agree with that. So yeah. to protect yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I did like this. Wow. So yeah. So even if you did go back to Belarus, I mean. You can't work because you don't have your card. <laughs> yeah. And I can't, yeah, and obviously they're not very happy about your, your protest yeah. move. Yeah. I'm not sure quite the right way to put it. People who are or people who have ADHD. Uh -huh. So, like, probably most of my friends are either diagnosed or DIY diagnosed with ADHD. Yeah, it's super interesting. And, and you've shared that you're, you're, are you diagnosed or are you just like, yeah, I'm ADHD? Uh, I diagnosed <laughs> by myself. Yeah. yeah. But I have a, uh, like, um, a lot of reason for this. Uh, my mom, uh, which, uh, who is the, uh, who is died three years ago. Yeah. Um, just uh, it's a short story about my family uh, we lived uh, like a till my 10 years yeah till I was 10 years we lived a good family it's like a really good family uh, they the parents was uh, running the business and everything is going well I, I can just ask them some I, I saw some toy in a TV and I was I, I was able to ask them, oh, I want this toy. And then the next weekend, I, I, I would have this toy. Mm. So the situation in the family was super nice. We were a happy family. And then when I was 10, something happened to in my mind, of uh, in my mother's mind, just like, a, I don't know, like a switch, bam. And she just uh, uh, started to change uh, her life like uh, totally in a different way starting to drink a lot of with uh, friends just uh, not sleeping at home starting to cheat into my father and it was no reason for this father my father was just like uh, confused what is going on we live the happy life together yeah. and there wasn't reason for this he didn't cheat it to her and it was just like a, nobody has idea still nobody has idea what what happened to her life and uh, after when I was 10 uh, she just uh, started to change uh, change uh, her life in a different way like totally and the life was just going down and down and friends was just changing from the the um, the bad friends you know just like uh yeah. life is going down it, well, because of the uh, drinking a lot of alcohol and having a lot of parties and work also the business just all uh, was totally ruined and she just started to work for other people and work just also started to change in for the bad one and bad and the best and just it's just going down and down and down but uh, it was not like a for one year it was like from my uh, 20 no from my 10 years to my 21 years yeah i was wow. in army and at that moment uh, relationship with my uh, with my mom was like my brothers my father we were just trying to you know uh, trying uh, different ways to change the situation yeah but every time it was just uh, 
screaming at her that what are you doing we 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 lived the best the good life and what what are you doing what is going on in your mind what are you doing these things what is what is going on it did and then she didn't have a she didn't have an answer even she didn't have an answer what is going on why she just started to change his life in a different way why he just um started to don't pay uh, don't didn't uh how to say it? don't take care of us and just starting to not spending time with the, his, her own kids or something it, it was like a totally misunderstood you know and uh, when i was in army yeah uh i then i just started to i i met some a good friend he gave me a good books about mindset and everything about imagination and everything i just started to change in my mindset in army and then, then I just started to think that we just tried to scream at her, to criticize her and everything, but we didn't try to show her love, you know, to try to help her like in, like really, or like really help, like uh, trying to show her the the better way in life. Not only just uh, your shit and you're doing the bad shit, and we, we just tried this way. So, and I just started to call her more and more often and just tried to started to uh, make this connection between us better and just starting to even even when i was calling to her every time she was drunk yeah and i was just trying to make this connection better just trying to support her by calling the uh, on just the phone calls and then i was just planning that okay i am now i'm gonna return for the army and i'm gonna just try to other way because her life was in like a, on the bottom of life you know it was she was living with the also drunk uh, people and the, she worked at the in a, such a dirty works and something the life was almost on the bottom so and i just started to, uh, i i had idea that i have to try the other way just to uh, accept her as as she is and trying to show her love and support and not screaming yes we all did mistake and such such like this yeah and i can forgive you i just in my mind it was like i can forgive you let's try one more time let's maybe i can help you something or somehow and after i came from uh after i returned from the army in two days when i just returned from the army uh, we were just uh, sitting with my father and uh, we were eating. Yeah, it was lunch time, and after we just finished, uh, he said that police call and said that mama is dead already, and he he just started to cry. Yeah, because he uh, he loves he loved her till the rest of her life because it was just you know the right person to him. He was trying to also anyways, but. Uh, it's a difficult also situation so um, that it's um, happened to my mother yeah and my mother also has a twin uh, and she also has the same problem within family like mm. totally the same they were just even uh, having fun together and going uh, wow. their life ru ruin their life on the bottom like in a shitty way and it's uh, it happened uh, also, it happened uh, to their grandmom, grandmas. Okay. So it's like, a, you know, see... Yeah, hereditary, genetic yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, something in genetic. So uh, it's also some kind of... And also about her behavior, because I grew, I was raised up with her t till my 10, and I have a lot of memories, and I have a lot of analysis of her life and her behavior. She was really like an artistic... Uh, woman she was uh, making the costumes uh, mm. and she worked with the costume makers yeah. and she was writing a lyrics about something like uh, she was like a really creative people and she was so kind it's uh, for me my mama is like uh, the kindest man i've ever met she wasn't like a bad man you know um because uh, she she was acting in um to other people in a good way every time but life still was going down i don't know that was like surprise for everyone what is going on what nobody has idea about what is going on and the problem is also that my father also has adhd 
and it's also it's like a lot of sim symptoms right you see that uh, I we noticed uh, all our family just noticed when you're talking with my father you just starting to realize that he was just uh, you it looks like he's listening to you but you're asking him uh, what I were talking to you right now and you ah Huh? It's just yeah. like a disorder, you know, yeah. in the head. So it's also a lot of symptoms I, I saw in my father and then my mother, but I didn't have an idea what is it. Before I met some problems with it, I was uh, trying to uh, I was trying to find myself in such a um, ways like a photography, video making, then a sushi cook, sushi cook, and uh, then uh, just uh, social media and blog and everything. And after some times, I was just starting to lose uh, interest. Yeah. to this like a totally no in no energy to to do the the things which uh, i could do a week ago like a f enthusiastic man like uh, doing and gr uh, making a good great result of it and then just something happened to me and after this it happened i just uh every time i met uh, um uh, how to say this uh, depression yeah mm, yeah depression because I was trying so hard. I was making some promises to myself and mm. for some people, and then th something happened, and you have no idea what it, what is it, what how it, how it works. You have no energy to keep going with this, and it it started to happen every time. Every time you just it was changing. Uh, I changed a lot of like ways of work or of jobs. And uh, it started to to be like you know nervous. What is going on? I, every time that it happened, I said to myself that okay, maybe it's not for me, and I will try something else. Maybe it's not mine. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Right. But when it happened, not once and not three times, not four times, it would happen every time. And also about my friends, I all I cannot be friend. Uh, with uh, people for a long time if I will spend a lot of time with one person yeah after some time I also losing the interest into him and I was just going to escape from the this relationship yeah I have only good friends uh, with whom I spent uh, not too much time you know like uh, from uh, remotely yeah. talking or just uh, having a meeting not so often like yeah. uh, one on mo one per month or even uh, oh, a yeah. long time yeah so I just uh, started to notice that something wrong with me because uh, it, it is just uh, I, I, now I just uh, was, was, was talking about this, uh, which I can just remember right now. But there is a lot of like symptoms of sure. this, a lot of signs that it happens. And like I said, with my mom, with my, uh, my, with my father, my father also has these problems and like uh, financial problems. You know, you cannot control your money. Yeah. It's like a kind of problem. So... The problem is that my father and my mom have, um, but about mom, I think she she used she had um, ADD attention deficit. But my father has uh, attention def a attention deficit hyperactive disorder with the hyperactive. Yeah. Because I also feel this hyperactive. I I have a lot of energy during the day. I have to free 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 it up. Yeah. Right? Every sure. time I, I feel this energy, which is uh, in the morning, I cannot just sit on my laptop <laughs> and do something that it's not super interesting for me right now, because uh, I always need to do something. I need to just uh, I need to free this energy up. Because, and after I did some, uh, I did some uh, physical work and I'm uh, my body is enough tired, but yeah. my mind is still keep going with uh, some uh, brain works. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I I found this information like um, a half year ago. Yeah, but I didn't. Also, I lost this uh, <laughs> lost interesting. Interest, yeah, yeah, and I didn't uh, <laughs> jump deep into these yeah. topics. So I I had a uh, I had idea that uh, I maybe I have ADHD, but I didn't research it like fully. And then when it happens again, like like I, I just lost any interest in my life, and I was just uh, sitting on an apartment. And I was just thinking. In, uh, yeah, the the reason was uh, to to jump deeply in this because I was sitting on uh, my room and I was just starting to think why people do suicide. Mm. It just it was the first sign, you know. Mm. When you live a normal life, usually you didn't have this uh, answers to yourself in your mind that uh, why people do uh, suicide. In that moment, I was just starting to think about why people do suicide now i have no reason to leave because i have no, no interest in for anything mm. 
but it wasn't like a, I have to do the suicide, but it was like a thinking about the suicide and why people do this. And it was scaring me. Yeah. Yeah. And I, then I just, okay, I need to research more information about the ADHD. And I just go deeply, not only uh, Russian, um, you know, uh, sources, uh, because in Russia, also because of this stupid system, uh, not there is no specialist about this question. So, uh, but I I'm like a guy because I started to uh, learn English and I can understand the English. I can uh, read in English. I can listen to the English uh, English and can understand it and everything. So I just started to search a lot of information and in, uh, just in in English sources, and I just started to meet in some uh, tests when you can just uh, pass some tests yeah. about you, about your parents and everything. And I just, uh, I just found that, that I have a DHD. And it's, it, after I found this information, I just looked back to my past, yeah. And every, uh, about my behavior and my, uh, like, uh, things that I did uh, to some people or something, and I didn't have an answer why I did this or how, why, why has it happened to my life and it was just like uh finding the sense in my life why what is going on in my life every every time like why i did this to some to someone or something and it was just like uh i was so happy that i found this information and i just started uh find more and more and more and more research and starting to more uh, doing an analysis about uh, my mother about my father about my life and i just uh, doing it and doing it and it was just collecting a lot of signs of that it, it's really in my life and i have a dhd yeah i mean obviously there's a, there's a ton of aspects that go with it that are really difficult and challenging i think also it, it says something about our society that it's like our society wants to be very linear and mm. i'm just speaking broadly here like the west russia whatever like societies want to be very linear very hierarchical very like even in the west like you, you there's a box there's a role you do this like there's there's like one way to do things right mm -hmm. it's like yeah you have one job you like you have three hobbies you're good at those yeah, or whatever it's like, it and it's like the, the like you can imagine a society or a way in which people are organized where ADHD isn't a disorder. It's just like, oh yeah, that person thinks this way. These people yeah. think that way. Right. And so like, I happen to be fairly linear minded and all that other stuff. Like I fit into a lot of systems like fairly well, even though I can be yeah, critical can of them. Just like, to, I, and like, I can do boring stuff that I don't want to do for hours. Right. And it's like, it's, kind of a bad thing that I can do. It's not like good in all circumstances that I can do it. But so anyways, um, th there's one aspect of ADHD that I've noticed, which is that uh, there's a superpower to it, which is this ability to hyper focus or yeah. ability might not be the right word, but like a gift. Like if there's something you're super psyched on, you can just do it at like 200%. In, like you yeah. made an album, a whole yeah. album in a Saturday the other day. And I didn't, I didn't feel the time at that moment. It's just like uh, every problem which is uh, exist in your life or something, even go to toilet. You just forget about going to toilet <laughs> because it's so interesting to you right now and you're doing it so great and you have to just keep going that moment. I want to be flying this moment till the, till I just do something great. And after I, uh, this hyperfocus is just finished yeah you just starting to feel oh my body it's hard because i was sitting on the same position like uh, for hours and i just didn't change my position it was because it's so interesting and you're forgetting about eating about going to toilet about even uh, changing your position of, of your sitting it's just happening hyper focus it's a superpower yeah but usually it, it only works for something interesting <laughs> yeah. yeah it's it's like it's like this uh it, you could describe adhd as an affliction where you can only do things that you're really interested in yeah doing, which which can be bad and can be good depending yeah on, the know. and the difference between the uh, normal people and adhd if you have to do something 
the normal people will find the reason to to do this to st keep doing these things because uh, maybe they they're working and they need money to pay taxes and uh, yeah. they have a family and they will find the reason to keep going doing things that it's Yes, it's boring, but I have to do this because I have a reason. But for ADHD people or ADD, it's no way. I cannot do this. I just have to just quit yeah. it right now yeah. because I, it's so boring and it's annoying. It's like a noise in my head. It, it happened to me every time and I, I changed a lot of works because it started to... But I didn't have a idea what is going on. It yeah. just was happening to my life every time, but I have no i had no idea what what's wrong with it i was just uh, feeling that i have to escape this environment right now because i cannot be here i cannot be with these people i don't want to agree with them i just i don't know what is going on but it's something inside me that tells me that you have to leave it right now it's uh, it's it's not just boring it's annoying being in this yeah i uh uh, I read the book uh, Driven to Distraction, which is a classic book on yeah, ADHD. Yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, I remember reading that. It's it's not that, uh, like in, in certain examples of certain people, it's not that the ADHD person finds it difficult to do something or to not do something. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, a, it's, it's basically impossible, you know? So like telling an ADHD person to just try harder to do something they don't want to do is about as useful as telling a depressed person to cheer yeah. up. Yeah, right? yeah. It's like it's the same. Well, yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> can't it's do the that. Same. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, the problem is uh, it's uh, about relationship with the parents or uh, friends because you even cannot explain what's going on inside you and why you have no mood right now for doing something or you yeah. just you can and when you don't know what uh, that you have ADHD it's more worth because it happened to my life every time I, I ruined a lot of relationship in my life just because I didn't know what is going on why I have no interest in being with these people but a week ago I was just spending time with them like a it was my it, they that people was for me like a best friends yeah. but after some time i was just lost the interest in and yeah. how can i explain them what is going on if yeah. i have no idea what is going yeah. on and after yeah i just uh, found this and now just starting to be more uh like a fr frankly to people yeah, yeah and just yeah. yeah i have this problem and that happens to me last time when i was in poland uh, i started to feel that uh, I feel bad in uh, working in a sushi cook because it requires a lot of concentration. When it's Friday or Saturday, you have to keep going and w making a lot of uh, works, like um, which requires a lot of uh, concentration. But I cannot find in myself this concentration. I, I need to. Uh, my brain is just oh, every time I was just was trying to watch uh, in the window or in the in the window or through the window or something and just like a, a lot of bad things and it's just like a snowball of bad things yeah. starting to come into your mind that is oh and it's just like a bad scenario. The, the, your brain just starting to make some scenario in your mind that how to escape this situation and even it, sometimes it happens like you're starting to agree with uh, your with my boss it was with me when I just like uh, oh he did this I have to say this and this because but the the truth is you don't want to you don't have uh, no you cannot do this work right now yeah. and your brain just trying to come up with the idea how to escape it right now even if it's the cast uh, or agree or losing your job yeah I mean I think that like going back to kind of the theme of our conversation which is like systems that suck people with adhd i think find it almost impossible to just go along with it right like things were messed up in your country and the system i get the sense that it wasn't like you were just going to go along with it like maybe you couldn't and maybe you couldn't because you're adhd yeah, right yeah, so it's like yeah. one That's of the reasons that you were able to start that facebook group and focus really hard to play poker with the KGB and yeah. escape and like you really yeah. like improved your life and stuff like this like you might have like the good way your life is going it's like you might have ADHD to thank for that yeah in, yeah in a way I mean, like, I think that, that yeah. I, I think I suspect it wouldn't surprise me at all if like a ton of people who have done a lot in terms of standing up and saying like 
yo, this system right here is messed up. We're going to make a new one. We're going to take it down. Like, whatever. Probably had ADHD or like yeah. something like that. Yeah, you know? I also like, heard about this. Yeah, yeah. also these old people just who could, cannot just get it for granted. Like, I don't want to live this way. I just can get this. But, but uh, how you are doing this? How are you just accepting this and yeah. just keep going living like this way? No, I cannot. It's impossible. This scenario is not for me. It's just uh, totally not for me. Yeah. And with the uh, case with the KGB, it's also with the, it's about the uh, ADHD person in a, when it's a situation like a collapse or something like this, you're not like uh, stressed, stressed or yeah. something. You're just like, uh, you're starting to feel that your brain works on a 100% because you have no fear inside, like uh, which makes you just standing and do nothing. You just, it's like, a, it's becoming interesting to solve this problem. <laughs> It's just like, a, yeah. no, it's not just like, a, you, you cannot feel this in the moment when it's happening, but it's just like a, your brain just, I, I, I couldn't yeah. sleep a whole week yeah. with this situation, but I was just coming up with a lot of ideas how I can escape yeah. this situation. I just was, I think if... You're the your other, hyper-focused superpower, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was just... Yeah, it Whereas was, a neurotypical might not have been able to handle it and just yeah, like yeah. made a mistake and yeah, now they're yeah. in jail or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think also the other people who doesn't have a ADHD, probably they would just, uh, you know, just already were, uh, would be in a prison in my case. But for me, it was like, uh, I don't want to go to prison. So now <laughs> I have to do something with it. I have to solve this problem. And I was just starting to play this crazy game with them yeah creative commons music by jason shaw over at audionautics.com thanks for listening